Okay, if you want to go all out in your holiday cooking, and I mean prepare a meal that will knock the socks off of someone, Chef Dan Enos from Capital Grill Restaurant, the new hot restaurant in town, is here with an unbelievable holiday recipe. And of course, Dr. John slash law student slash chef extraordinaire is really excited about this thing because no, you are I, a fabulous cook. Well, I'm a chef hack compared to Dan, clearly uh, watching what he was doing. Hey, would you tell us tell us what each of these dishes are? Because I have all sorts of questions for you. I could go on for an hour about that. Well, Typical is, doctor yeah. asking 5,000 questions. Yeah. This is a, it's a holiday menu that, that we designed. Um, it's a five-course five course menu. Ooh. Starts off with um, crab and lobster cakes, our signature appetizer, along with our calamari, which is a signature appetizer. It goes into um, a mescaline green salad. And this is tossed with a raspberry vinaigrette, uh, crumbled goat cheese, um, dry cherries, and uh, candied walnuts. Nice fall, winter type salad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's tart. Peppy? Did you say no, peppy? No. Well, it's peppy, but also kind of heavy. It, it is a little yeah. peppy, yeah. yes. I love um, peppy. Oh, I love guys who say peppy. It has a tartness from the raspberry, but the, um, the richness from the goat cheese and the sweetness from the, from the walnuts and the cherries right. actually complements each other very, very well. I've actually had that salad. It's very, very good. That was great. I'm actually going to start this next week so people can try it when they come in. Mm. Um, and then we go into... Um, it's, it's a, our dry aged steak, right. Capital Grill. We're the best. famous for dry aged steaks. Um, basically, what it is is it's a 14 ounce sirloin, and it's, I'm going to slice it, and I'm going to top it with this uh, Cabernet rosemary mm. um, demi glaze. Mm. Now, how, long, how long do you cook that down for? So I mean, it needs it really thick, correct? Right? Yeah, I want I want this to be real thick. I could actually turn this off now. Um, yeah, it's it's a thick sauce. I actually mm. started halfway up the pan and let it reduce way way down. Wow! It just intensifies the flavor. Rosemary gives you a great flavor with right. it too. Dan, let me ask a silly question. Sure. What is dry aged meat? There's there's two kinds of dry aging. There's a, actually there's two kinds of aging. There's a wet aging and a dry aging. Um, the dry aging is it, all the steak comes in a, a cryovac pack. We take it out of there and we dry off. We dry off all the juices, if you will, and we put it in a temperature-controlled environment, about eight, 75, 85 percent humidity. Wow, that's and, complicated. Yeah, and about about uh, 36, 37 degrees, and um, what it does is, 14 to 21 days, it forms a, a crust on the outside, right. and it intensifies the flavor. All the juices mm -hmm. go to the center of the steak. It tenderizes it. It's an unbelievable, now, unbelievable steak. Now you go to AJ's or Bashes and, mm -hmm. and buy the meat. Do they do all this, or they kind of get it that way, or do you do it at home? No, I, I, I mean, you could do it at home. Um, mostly that's all wet aging, though, and that's still in a temperature-controlled environment. Um, I, so, so laying the cow out on my dining room table is probably not the best Probably thing not, <laughs> unless, unless the humidity the is, is correct and, and the temperature is correct. I thought that, you that just took it out of the freezer, thawed it out, boom, yeah. on the grill or in the pan. Now, yeah. let me ask you a question. We talked about before. When you saute mushrooms, I, I'm not sure this, I was quizzing my children about this. When you saute mushrooms, give us a rationale for getting the, getting the oil up to a certain temperature first, well, and how do you know? What you want to do is you want, you want the pan to be extremely hot. You want it to be at the smoke point, okay. basically, when it starts to smoke up a little bit. You throw the mushrooms in there, what it does is it, it, it sears the outside of the mushrooms, basically and it, it intensifies the flavor by searing. If you were to just put it in a cold pan, all the flavor and the juices from the mushrooms would, would permeate out of it, okay. oh. and you'd lose all that in the bottom of the pan. But by hitting it with a really hot pan, or hit, um, having a really hot right. pan and putting the mushrooms in, just really intensifies the flavor of the mushrooms. And then the mushrooms won't soak up the oil either? No, it won't. Okay. It now, won't. how about caramelizing? I, I've always thought you caramelize with, with the natural sugars. Do you, do, you, do you use oil for that or just water when you caramelize, like caramelizing onions? Caramelizing onions, you can use a little bit of oil. Okay, okay yeah. cook and talk and put this all together oh, while, while the doctor here is saying, is that yeah. cauterizing? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. That's caramelizing. Well, I, I, don't get a caramelizing. Chance, I don't get a chance to quiz an expert much. I've got to take advantage of it. Oh, yeah, wow, but you get to. Yeah. You know, use a knife on people. Ooh, look at this. Boy, see, you have got the knife cutting down. You were also saying, uh, Chef Dan, that it's really relaxing to cook. That's what you want to be yeah. in your next lifetime, John? Is Either right? Oprah or I want to be a chef. Well, we'll work on the Oprah part. Uh, I don't know. Probably a chef. Maybe a chef. Uh, closer to that. <laughs> yeah. I also forgot one thing about this. I also uh -oh. have baked stuff shrimp. I brought a little bit of New England. Wow. With me to uh, oh, the Capitol Grill. So now, you were saying before you trained at uh, uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. At, at yep, the, Johnson and Wales University. Mm. And that's a that's a really well wow. renowned school. Yes, it is. Excellent. Ooh, wow, that's mine. That that's mine. That is so mine. Oh. And this again is the holiday menu that we're serving. We have uh, three private dining rooms at the Capitol Grill. Mm -hmm. Anywhere from ten to fifty-six people. And uh, a Wonderful. chef's table. I can work with a guest if they would like to uh, do any specific recipe or, you know, work with them Terrific. if they want me to cook anything. Wow. Okay. So.
Well, we're just about out of time. We are going to definitely uh, do some dining here. Just a reminder to let you all know that uh, that Phoenix is. Magazine has ranked uh, the Capitol Grill best new restaurant for 2003. So congratulations Thank to you, you and your much. staff. And we missed the one. creme brulee with the blowtorch. I love yeah, the blowtorch. I even have Where's a little blowtorch. Where's the blowtorch? Blow these, are, these are the two desserts that are also served with that. A okay. flourless chocolate espresso cake and creme Ooh, brulee. Yum. Ooh, okay, perfect. you cannot use a blowtorch in the emergency room. Or can you? No, I haven't yet. Okay. Well, I've had a funny story about that, but I won't tell you. <laughs> we'll save it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Chef Danino, thanks so Thank much for joining us from Capitol Grill. Up next, is your child bright or gifted, or does your school provide enough of a challenge for that gifted student? Author Kathy Colby is here. She's got a whole different idea on how to raise your gifted child using your best uh, gut instinct. We'll have that in just a minute. <laughs> oh yes, we have a serious guest here. You're saying, uh, was that a little mask I saw? Absolutely. We like to make it crazy here on Your Life A to Z. Hey, we're talking about gifted kids. You know, your child might ask a million questions and then quickly uh, find out that, well, they're a quick learner, but are they really gifted? I want to read you a stat here. Arizona law defines a gifted student as one who scores in the 97th percentile in standardized tests, okay? Schools are required here in Arizona to offer gifted students some sort of accelerated program. The question is, how do you know if your school's gifted courses are doing the job. There was a big article in the Arizona Republic and our next guest who is <laughs> a crazy woman. Yes, Kathy Colby who believes in humor with her children most of all. Powered by Instinct Author. We'll tell you about the book. Here to help us find out what's best for your own child. And Kathy, okay, should I wear my tiara? I don't know. Oh yes, I like it. I am a queen, okay? <laughs> not a diva, just a queen, and right? And gifted. And gifted. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Absolutely. Can you do the honk thing though? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's definitely gifted. That's yeah, right. Gifted, gifted yes. Well, right. We've been talking about, well, we got to put that back on later. We have been talking seriously, though, about this article, which went down this whole list about is your child bright or gifted. And you say this really is wrong, and we are not doing it the right way in our state. So tell us what you're really talking about here. First of all, the, the law is totally wrong if it's been changed from the way it originally was to say that gifted education should be accelerated. Gifted kids do not need more math and science. Some of them have no interest in math and science. Mm -hmm. Gifted kids aren't necessarily bookworms. A lot of gifted kids are playful. They, they love right. you know, activities that involve drama or art. You can be gifted in so many ways. And yes, gifted is high IQ. It's a bad word because every kid is gifted. Every kid has right. talents. Well, and, it, and it's labeling, too. And you were saying yeah. you're one of the pioneers in really starting the concepts. Yeah, it bothers me a lot because I founded the Gifted and Talented programs in Arizona and developed the Scottsdale program. But they've taken it in such a wrong direction. It makes me just sick. If parents are reading this list, they're getting a totally wrong idea of what a gifted child is. A gifted child is delightful sometimes and sometimes a nightmare. Hang on, we lost your microphone. Where'd it go? Oh, my microphone. Where's the microphone? I can give you mine. Keep talking. Okay. Do we have a microphone? So, so, Where'd it go? So right now, I mean right now. Hang on, we got to get personal here. So, okay, we'll talk into my chest. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know. I think the cow ruined the, the mic. The mic. There we so, go. So right okay. now, is the school district pigeonholing children into this gifted like math, science, reading, study hard? You know, what they're hard? doing, thanks. What they're doing is creating programs that are to make future academic geniuses. Well, right. gifted kids have three characteristics. There are only three that we really have to worry about. But wait a minute, about. there are like 50 here. Yeah, and they're wrong. Okay. They just, they're Forget wrong. Forget it. Throw it away. We have five gifted kids in our family. We only have five kids, so they're all gifted. <laughs> but they are as different from one another as you can imagine. The only ways that I find gifted kids are similar is they all are able to manipulate. They manipulate us. So parents, if your kid's manipulating them, <gasps> sign of giftedness. Oh, I got three. Yeah. They manipulate the classroom, so they drive teachers crazy. Right. But they do that because they can also anticipate. They anticipate what's going to happen in class so they get bored easily. They anticipate jokes so they laugh ahead of the punchline. They anticipate the punishment so they start negotiating around it. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It's fun to watch them, but it's also very frustrating when they're little. Right. They don't have the communication skills, so they do it in ways that sometimes Drive are you out yeah, of your very mind. hard to do. It, it can happen in junior high, too. You know what, though, John? Your yes. children go to uh, Villa Montessori, right. which is a, a little different concept in learning and mm -hmm. we were talking about what is gifted what's not and to me what I'm hearing you say is everybody has a different style of learning and it might not be you know the linear way or mathematics I know for me it was not math it was right. more 
the creative the way arts, of yeah. learning. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I, I grew up in Catholic school, and it was sit in the desk, and it drove me, and I drove them out of my <laughs> mind. And I'm, I mean, it was just, I mean, I barely passed high school. So many of the public schools have become like that. They, the desk works. So right. Be oh. quiet if, well, one little boy in first grade who's highly, highly gifted, has genius level IQ, is now being told, his parents are being told, he can't sit still. Well, they're going to label that kid ADD. Right. His instinct is to get up and move around and be active, and he's highly flexible. He just doesn't fit the cookie the mold. mold. Exactly. Yeah. The mold. We yeah. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. hard, though, because I do have a lot of empathy for educators. I really do. I think there's a lot of pressure from parents. I think a lot of today's parents want their children to be bright. It's kind of an ego thing. So mm. school districts, I think, are... Are they responding to that? Well, let's go ahead and create all of these programs when, I mean, my kids are smart. They have a gifted program. They're gifted in different ways. But What's wrong nothing. with all of us thinking our kids are gifted? If we do that and we challenge right. them. As long as you don't put the pressure on to say, okay, you're gifted, so what I want you to do is get become very good in math, very good yeah, right. that's in wrong. science and computer, right. when actually, you know what, you're a creative soul. Right. right. And that's where I think we're doing too much pigeonholing, and I think yeah. parents are pressuring school districts as well. Parents are too concerned <clears throat> about tests. They're too concerned about my child being in the 90s, stay nine. You, lots of gifted kids don't do well in the classroom on academic tests. It's amazing. You were saying you didn't do well academically. Oh, no, I, I literally barely got out of high school. I probably had a C, just above a C average. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that means you were normal. Yeah. See, normal. But I had a lot of fun. <laughs> well, <laughs> well and we, that's part yeah. of the issue. We yeah. bet you did. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the goal is not to have your kid get straight A's, I don't think. The goal should not be to have your kid get in the best college. I mean, some of the worst snobs I've ever seen are oh. the people who go through everything with straight A and the best, the best, the best, and you hire them. And as an employer, I'll tell you, they don't know how to solve yeah. problems. They have no social skills. I mean, that's what I see a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of gifted kids have the problem with the social skill only because they do anticipate. Right, they're way ahead. They're so, their mind is thinking leaps and bounds ahead, and so they wonder, what's wrong with these other kids? They don't get it. They don't understand. Yeah. So we do have to teach them patience. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have to get realistic for just a minute here, Kathy, because I think what you're saying is very accurate. However, we have this whole system in place. It's, it's a whole paradigm in America on how we are doing education, how we are labeling our children. As a parent, sometimes it takes a little guts to stand up and say, no, this isn't working. So, right. so how do you really tell somebody to get powered by your gut instinct as a parent to say, you know what, my kid needs this approach? Be obstinate, but be strategically obstinate. Go to the teacher and ask how you can help. Instead of saying to the teacher, what you're doing is wrong and not working, that'll just alienate the teacher. Mm -hmm. Go in and offer assistance. Talk about what works at home. Talk yeah. about ideas and can I come in and volunteer and just be a partner to the teacher. Right. Don't, don't try to argue all the yeah. time. It doesn't well, work. I've done everything wrong, I think, with my daughters, especially my oldest one. I, I've realized, you know, I, I probably have messed it up a it's little bit. It's a learning bit. experience for having kids. What's okay. a, a take-home point? They'll have, <laughs> they'll have lots to talk about when they grow up. Yeah, yeah, what's right, a take on the couch. You, you brought your book. What's a take-home point for parents who are watching this? There are five rules to trusting your guts. Try them. Use them. Your guts will tell you more about what your kid needs than any, any other thing. Test. Yeah. I mean, ah. Very good. Don't much listen to important. others so much. Listen to and yourself. And have fun, you know? right? Absolutely. Okay. You know, that's what it's all about. Raising say. kids should be fun, <laughs> and uh, I can't wait for my grandkids to use this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'll say, oh, Grandma. <laughs> oh, my God, you've embarrassed me See, again. On we TV. can go to the legislature <laughs> saying, let's reform, let's change it all. <laughs> that's Queen Diva talking. Okay, you ready for Halloween? I'm getting there. You are, because we know you are gifted now. Are you going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or... I've, I told you, I've always wanted to be a pirate. <laughs> oh, no. He's going to talk story. about future <laughs> sashes, scaring me, puppy sleeves, uchi la la. Okay, <laughs> Kathy Colby, thank you so much. We really appreciate uh, the information. Next up, it is a Halloween fashion show for grown-ups, no kids allowed. And a little later, we will unveil our super makeover for this Tuesday. Robert Quinn has been working on Cheryl Jones all morning, and soon we will see the end result. Oh, he's foofing. Oh, you need pirate sleeves. Mm -hmm. Oh, darling.